love says you before me. So when, when I think about this, I, I, uh, my point, when I'm trying to make my point, my point is actually my poison. My patience, that's my power. And it's you and me, babe, whatever comes. Knowing bigger hands are holding us. And the greatest days are ahead of us. Growing in love, Growing in love. learning to be a better us. Hi there, welcome to A Better Us and welcome to our home. So here's a question for you. Okay. Why do people get married? Hmm. Well, because they love each other and they want to build a life together. Yeah, but when you break it down, what do they think is in it for them personally? Hmm. Well, I think most of us might say because it will make me happy. Right? You're probably right. Yeah. But coming up, marriage expert and best-selling author Gary Thomas looks at the purpose of marriage from a different angle, hmm. one that we may not have thought about. Well, something that a lot of us do think about is our health and our diet and those weight fluctuations and everything that goes with it. So marriage experts Dave and Ashley Willis will be here to talk about the different health seasons we face. Mm -hmm. They call it in thickness and in health. <laughs> I like that. And they'll address how to best respond to our spouse during those thickness seasons mm -hmm. because that makes all the difference. Right. And we'll talk about it all with our kitchen couple, CFL football great Mike Pinball Clemens and his wife Diane. And recording artist, author, and speakers Dan and Danielle McCauley. So stay with us. I'm the third of four children, which means I'm not a type A personality. I grew up thinking of myself as polite and laid back, the kind of guy who just wants to get along with others. So you might imagine my surprise when I got married and realized how the smallest things could irritate me in ways that really shocked me. In fact, one of the first issues my wife and I faced were ice cube trays. The family I grew up in, if you got out an ice cube, you're supposed to refill the tray and put it back in the freezer so the next person has a nice full tray of ice cubes. And I'm convinced that's the biblical way to handle yourself in the kitchen. Unfortunately, my wife grew up a family that would run those things down to an ice chip. As long as there was something that you could scrape off with a knife, you weren't morally obligated to refill the trays and put them back in the freezer. And so as a new husband, I was so frustrated wanting this nice full tray of ice cubes and a little ice chip would come out. And I couldn't explain to my wife how much of my joy and happiness depended on having this nice full tray of ice cubes whenever I wanted it. So one night she was speaking romantically to me and she said, Garrett, I'm going to love you forever. I thought, here's my chance. I said, honey, I don't need you to love me forever. I need you to love me for seven seconds. She looked at me and said, what are you talking about? I said, I timed how long it takes to fill the ice cube trays and to put them in the freezer. And it's about seven seconds. Now, if you think that's pathetic, I think it's pathetic. And if you would have told me growing up that I would let something as trivial as ice cube trays actually become an issue in my marriage, I don't know that I ever would have believed it. And I was surprised at how marriage was challenging me in my character. And I remember telling my brother not too long after I got married, he's my older brother, incredible man, and yet I got married before him. And I, I told him, I, I think I understand the Apostle Paul now. That if your goal in life is just to serve Jesus, consider singleness because marriage takes far more time and effort than I ever thought it would take. But if your goal in life isn't just to serve Jesus, but to become like Jesus, I said, get married. Because I've never experienced anything like marriage that God has used to reveal my sin. And just as importantly, gives me an opportunity to grow out of those areas. And that's what led to the subtitle of sacred marriage. What if God designed marriage to make us holy more than to make us happy? Now, I want to stress, I don't believe that happiness and holiness are mutually exclusive. I love the quote from John Wesley, the great evangelist who said, I don't know anyone who's truly happy that isn't also pursuing holy. And if you think about it, you know that's true. Somebody whose anger isn't under control is pushing people away. They're not a happy person. A, a woman who's a materialist or always negative can never be satisfied. She's not a happy person. Holiness protects our happiness 
It doesn't compete with us. And so Jesus says in Matthew 6, which is really one of my life verses, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what I love about that then is marriage helps me fulfill what Jesus calls me to make a first priority in the Sermon on the Mount, pursuing righteousness. If that is, I look at the foundation of marriage as a humble commitment to keep growing in holiness. Rather than resenting those points where marriage pinches our feet saying, this is an opportunity for my sin to be exposed and to get rid of it so I can go on to live a life more resembling who Jesus Christ is. It comes down to this. We can use our marriage to destroy our sin as it exposes our sin, or we can allow our sin to destroy our marriage. One or the other is going to take place because I found behind virtually every case of marital dissatisfaction lies unrepentant sin. That's why I believe couples don't fall out of love so much as they fall out of repentance. When a couple comes into my office as a pastor, it's almost always a character issue that's causing problems in their marriage. It's a lack of one or two people who no longer are pursuing holiness in their individual life and it's affecting their couple intimacy. So if you want to renew your marriage, renew your commitment to grow in holiness, to pursue Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, we are here with our kitchen yes, couples we and we're doing it via Zoom still for COVID reasons. Yeah, so that's, but that's okay. We're still together. It works. We are together. <laughs> We've we got have... Mike and Diane. We've got Dan and Danielle. Now, Mike and Diane, you don't look, really look like you're in your kitchen right now. And I know there's a reason for that. What's going on? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Could you tell? Like you have a bookshelf behind us. Yeah. <laughs> you got some. We're in the midst going of on. renovations. Right. Woo! right. So Woo! things are a little bit crazy at our house. So we had to come over to the office. All right, yeah. it works. Crazy and noisy. That's okay. Yes. That's okay. That's okay. It kind of sounds like normal house, right? Crazy and noisy yeah. and. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You would think we're in renovations. But we're not. <laughs> it's just the kids. Yes. It's just the kids. <laughs> well, Gary Thomas, uh, it's great stuff so with good. that. Is marriage to make you happy or mm. holy? And it's some challenging thoughts he certainly has. He always makes me think. Yeah. When he starts talking. He's so good. Because when we think about it, you know, we, we think, okay, it's we're all about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? It's reading the Declaration yeah, of Independence. Yeah. And, Even in and, Canada, it, it sounds like a good thing to follow, right? And it, so yeah. it's all about making me happy. But maybe if we think of it differently, maybe God wants us to make us holy. Because doesn't happiness kind of make me reflect inward? Like, see, mm. okay, am, am I happy? What about me? What are my needs? Are my needs being met? Instead of trying to be holy, mm -hmm. meaning looking upward and saying, okay, God, Am I pleasing to you? Is my life pleasing you? And in turn, as I do that, then I become a, a better person to live with, mm. an easier person to live with. What do you guys think? Well, when you mm. said uh, holy, I, I, I thought um, whole, right? Um, the two becoming one. And if the two are going to become one, then that means that I can't think about myself first, right? And and you know we spoke about happiness maybe being that that internal look and 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 uh, love says you before me. So when when I think about this, I, I uh, my point when I'm trying to make my point, my point is actually my poison, my patience. That's my power. When, when we talk about coming together as one, right, getting my point in can be poisonous. But, mm -hmm. but, but when, I, uh, when I exercise patience and, and try to come together and sort of understand, put her first, that's the power. That's good. That's so good. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, humility. There's a quote that says, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all of that is kind of, uh, you know, being like Jesus. And that, that's the point, what Gary Thomas was saying. Yeah. The more we, we follow him and imitate him and become like him, we're becoming more holy. You know, people have a different mm -hmm. ideas of what holy means uh, and probably skewed things. But it's basically is being like 
Christ. And so mm-hmm. what kind of uh, you know, mm-hmm. characteristics did he exhibit? And some of the ones you guys just pointed out mm-hmm. are, are definitely mm-hmm. being like Christ. Yeah. The scripture clearly yeah. says that God is love, right? And and Jesus himself put put himself, right? Um, uh, put us before him, right? By, by dying on the cross for us and, and uh, giving his life uh, so that we could be redeemed. That's good, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, the thing that stuck out to me the most, there were so many good things in this. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Gary, for all of this. But um, he kind of slapped us in the face towards the end with, saying how an unholy or sorry an unhappy or discontented marriage um, is signs of sin and unrepentant sin and that that kind of slapped me in the face anyway Mm -hmm. um, and I actually found this quote from Gary's book called sacred marriage and I want to read it because it was so good strong Christian marriages will be struck by lightning we will bad stuff will happen. Temptation, Mm. communication problems, frustrations like the ice cube tray, unrealized expectations. But if the marriages are heavily watered with an unwavering commitment to please God above everything else, the conditions won't be as ripe for a devastating fire to follow the lightning strike. And, you know, I just think, just like he was saying, it's something as small as the ice cube tray. Um, marriage is full of moments every single day where uh, our natural sinful tendencies, our selfishness, and all these things will arise. But if we have that unwavering commitment to please and serve God first, that is what will help us to serve and please one another in the process. And it just works. I think we are by nature, selfishly oriented creatures, Mm -hmm. right? So we walk around thinking about what makes us happy. But his point was that um, when we seek first God's kingdom and what he wants, setting ourselves apart for him, um, I think when we focus on him, he changes our heart to be more like his. Right. So it's like when you spend time with your best friend and then you, you kind of pick up the same lingo, you have catchphrases, you have a secret handshake, you have a, whatever, you have these things in common, you become kind of like each other. So I think initially we're, we're, we trend towards wanting to make ourselves happy, but when we focus on him, he changes our heart so that what makes us happy is the things that please him. Yeah. So there's a there's a heart change where God says that He will give you the desires of your heart. Part That's of that process, of. part yeah. of that process is Him changing our hearts so that what makes us happy is what makes Him happy. Mm-hmm. So we're, it's, so it's not that we're not happy; it's that different things make us happy. It, it's that um, that serving our wife uh, makes us happy. That uh, seeing God's kingdom advance on the earth makes us happy i think it's it's changing what our happiness actually is Mm -hmm. and and we shouldn't beat ourselves up if if you know we take two steps forward and one step back and we find that you know we're 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 getting selfishness in the way and then we know i gotta i gotta change it i gotta get back on track um eugene peterson wrote a book that i love just the title of the book is called a long obedience in the same direction and it talks Mm. all about pursuing holiness you know, we're, we're just, it's a long obedience. We, we're on this road together as a couple pursuing holiness mm-hmm. and individually in our individual lives pursuing holiness. But we don't want to exclude everyone else because of this. It's that we want to include Jesus in every right. aspect of our lives mm-hmm. as we pursue holiness. Yeah. And I think that brings us closer yeah. together then. And the scripture Gary Thomas gave was Matthew six thirty three: seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then uh, the rest of that verse says, and then all these other things will be added to you. So what do we really, we're thinking we're pursuing happiness. No, that's just one of those other things. Mm, Seek God first, top good. priority, yeah. and then happiness will come along for the ride mm-hmm. because you're putting him yeah. as top yeah. priority. So that's, that's good. Yeah. That's good stuff. Good discussion, yes. guys. We got to move on. This has been so good. We've got more coming up. So yeah. stay with us. Your spouse needs to know you are in to where they are right now. And yeah, you want them to be at their best, but if, if they're petite, you're into petite. If they are full-figured, you are into full-figured. If they are wherever they are, you're into them. You're attracted to them. You love them exactly as they are.
All right, so physical health and marriage. This is always a hot topic and one that a lot of couples want to avoid, I think, except for maybe those, those rare couples where both have, I don't know, they see it in the same value as, right, as each right. other. But most of the time, one spouse really values physical health, really is good at physical health, and the other's like, mm, it's okay. You know? Or you're maybe just on different different, different places different with places it. It's in the less, journey. less of a priority. Right, yeah. And you know, we've learned through the years, we're wired up a lot differently you know, in this yes. area and like what we like to eat, what we like to do. But we decided early on in our marriage, um, as our marriage was kind of going through seasons of what we call in thickness and in health, not yep. just in sickness and in health, but we've mm -hmm. had the full range of, you know, being being thick and being like less thick and being healthy, being less healthy. And we yeah. said like overall, like, yeah, we get it. We need to live and enjoy life and eat foods we like and all that. But we also need to go back to what scripture says in First Corinthians, which is we need to honor God with our bodies. And we've discovered that if we'll both make health a priority, and again, not not to the extreme. I mean, I, I still have love handles, don't worry. I'm not gonna <laughs> give you like tips on how to see your abs because I can't see mine. But when we just kind of like overall say, let's make health a priority in our home, what it right. does is it honors God, our creator, who gave us these bodies. Uh, and until we get to heaven and have permanent perfect ones, we've got these temporary ones that it's kind of up to us to do our part to keep them as healthy as we can so we can do all God has called us to do. Yep. But it also is an act of respect to our spouse to say, by taking care of my body, since we're one flesh, I'm also investing in, in the health of our marriage and the energy I have to be at my best for you. It's so true. And it's never our job to criticize our spouse when it comes to physical health, but it is our job to encourage. So what does that look like practically speaking? It means giving your spouse the time and the space they need to pursue having better physical health. That maybe means like you watch the kids a little bit more than you're used to so they can go take that Zumba class they've been wanting to take. It means maybe in the morning you get the kids ready on certain days of the week so that your spouse can go for a run. It means not buying those foods that you know are trigger foods for your spouse because you know that they're gonna feel bad about it because they can't say no to it. And I'm talking to myself here and we learned this the hard <laughs> yeah, way. There are so many of those but for me. we have to support each other and encourage each other. Yeah, and then when you do have those days and you're, and you're eating those trigger foods, you know what, enjoy it as en a gift from enjoy God. Enjoy your, your free day. He, yes. he, he made those goodies and in moderation, <laughs> those are a treat from him. Like Ashley said though, this is the physical health part especially are decisions we have to make for ourselves. And if your spouse ever feels like you're critiquing them in yeah. this area or that you're not attracted to them at, at the moment, that's heartbreaking and that's just flat yeah. out wrong. And so your spouse needs to know in every season and wherever they are in their health that you have eyes only for them and they are your standard of, of what attraction is. They are the yes. only one that you're drawn to uh, romantically, sexually, or otherwise. If you've got wandering eyes, if you're trying to compare your spouse to these airbrushed images of people who aren't even real, man, that is just wrong. Yeah. Like your spouse needs to know you are into where they are right now. And yeah, you want them to be at their best, but if, if they're petite, you're into petite. If they are full figured, you are into full figured. If they are wherever they are, you're into them. You're attracted to them. You love them exactly as they are. And together, know, with the security that comes from knowing that you both love each other exactly where you are, that creates an environment where you both can be healthier, mind, body, and soul. Absolutely, and I just wanna say real quick, if your spouse is facing a health battle, make sure that you're right there in the corner with them. That means going to appointments, that means reassuring them that you're not leaving their side, that you will get through this together, that God has great plans for the two of you, and that this is a battle that you both are facing because it's never a his problem only or a her problem only, it's always our problem. So make sure that you're right there for each other, encouraging each other all along the way. Okay, we're with our kitchen couples. We've got Dan and Danielle McCauley. We've got Mike and Diane Clemens. Great to be with you guys again. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's all about physical health. And there was yeah. a lot of good pointers in that. But you know what my takeaway was? What was my it? takeaway was that you can eat all the trigger foods you want because they're a gift from God. <laughs> yeah. I love it. The <laughs> okay, now that, that's pushing it a little bit. Uh, chocolate chip cookies. Too that's much. my trigger food. I love it. No, okay. It's, it's, no, it's there was, a challenge. There was good stuff you know, in there. For, for all of us. Yeah. You know, we we have our times where we we kind of go on the uh, we try the, to... the diet time and we kind of lose weight at maybe over thirty days, but then. You know, it'll come back and we get on this cycle sometimes that yeah. it, it's not that good. But at least 
uh, we're trying, but, but you it's know the what? maintaining okay. Okay, guys, that's the challenge. As the senior couple here on the, on the screen, okay, we are the senior. We, we own it. We own it. Not by much. I need to I need to tell you that the older you get, the harder it is to keep those numbers on the scale within that little, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, oh you'll be there one day, Dan, Danielle. You will be there. <laughs> oh, I feel like we're oh, getting there already. already. <laughs> Over 40 now. So, well, you know what? It is, it's a tricky thing, um, like Dave and Ashley said, is that often in a couple, um, in a relationship, there's one that might value health and wellness and being fit and all that more than the other ones. So it's hard to get on the same page or at the same time or that kind of thing. And I will admit, I will admit, I've admitted a lot of things on air, but that was me, you know, way back when I might have been the one who was, you know, nagging or, you know, doing something to try to get Dan to I love the look on Dan's face. <laughs> the Dan like she's admitting something, but then she's that means you're well forcing done. you're admitting something about me at well, the same just time. Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done. But what I was about to say was um, I was definitely guilty of maybe critiquing or criticizing or doing the nagging and being the one to, to try to change you. And often I think what happens is we think that in being uh, in critiquing or being critical or saying negative things, it's going to end up with a positive result, which it obviously does the opposite. Mm. And throughout the years, what I've come to learn is the times that you have been the most healthy and fit and all of that motivated. has been motivated has been all your own choice, your own doing, not because of me, not because of my nagging. And so maybe I would say to the, the younger ones out there who value you know, what your spouse looks like and if they're fit and healthy and all of that, I feel like um, just love them unconditionally like what they said the safe place is when your spouse is cheering for you and loves you like Dave said if you're whatever you're into right now whatever you look like I'm into that and so we are I feel like now we're both on the same page we're both just trying to be healthy I think that's as it, like you said and just the older we get we want to be healthy and honor God with our bodies. Yeah, you know, and I would say the other thing is uh, don't try and hold your spouse uh, to uh, comparing to all the other things that we see out there, what, whether it's Hollywood or TV, magazines, all, all of those things. They're not real. They've even mentioned it's airbrushed. And, uh, you know, all these times I've seen, I've, you know, you've seen a certain actor in a movie who looks a certain way. Oh, he's got, you know, these killer abs. And then you find, you read an article afterwards that he was so miserable the entire time for months leading up to that and during that and could not wait to eat a burger after and go back to normal. And yet that like this thing where he's torturing himself, we hold up to like some kind of standard right. and same for the women. It's just, it's uh, not healthy. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I know. And in our house, uh, I'm the one that do the grocery shopping and I'm always getting snack foods because we have three young women in our home and we just we love snacking all the time. And I know Mike finds it hard sometimes because if I bring it in the house, he's going to eat it. Right. And I'm like, it's OK. You know, just enjoy life. Enjoy yourself. That cookie is not going to hurt you. Yeah. Even if we want to stay in bed at night at 12 o'clock and order a pizza, it's okay. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to enjoy and life. But, you know, there's a balance. There's always a balance. You have to eat healthy as well. But it's nothing wrong with, you know, having sweets every now and then and enjoying yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. In sickness and in health, I'm going to love you just the way you are. It doesn't matter. Up 10 pounds, down 10 pounds, I don't care. <laughs> just in case you're wondering right now, up 10 pounds. <laughs> Uh, she has always been the healthy one, the one that always does the little things right. But we, we are learning, though, uh, now to what, what works for each other. Like, so we're, 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 it's important to know what works for you. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I try to drink a lot of water because um, drinking any kind of pop, uh, all, all those kind of sugary stuff is, is a real weakness for me because um, I, I, I can go without eating. But I like to drink and I'll drink all day long. And, and I find that a lot of my weight is drinking weight. So, so finding out what works for you, I think, is so fundamentally yeah, important. Yeah. That's good. And That's being good. happy together. Yeah. I've got my water in my A Better Us mug, Mike. And so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. being healthy That's, together. That's good stuff. I, I like, try to drink a lot of water as well. I like that Dave and Ashley said we need to focus on mind, body and soul. You know, mm. it's, it's, it's the whole package deal. And to remember that you're on the journey together. Yeah. 
and that you know your looks are going to come and go they're going to go up and down over yeah. the long haul they're going to change we all mm -hmm. change as we age but as long as you're focused on the inner person that that's the person yeah. you love that's the person you're attracted to and then try to be healthy together yeah. and on that road together of being healthy i think that's yeah. that's what the bottom well, line is you want to take care of your body because you want to be the, the best you you can be for your spouse yeah. for one mm -hmm. and um and you want to be a better us all t together. Absolutely. And so it, th there's a balance there, as we were all, all saying, that, yeah. you know, some days you have these cheat days. In fact, we usually we try to eat well during the week. And mm -hmm. then on the weekend is when we can have our cheat days. That's so, right. so we That's always right. look forward to See, it. But we the danger there... <laughs> is a three-day weekend because yeah. most of the time <laughs> friday's the weekend saturday's the yeah. weekend, okay. sunday's the weekend. <laughs> but but, but no, we, we'll have that saying. we'll look at each other and we when we know the ice cream's in the fridge we'll say it's the, the weekend, weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it's a good you know moderation yeah. not to overlook it though yeah. health is well yeah. Yeah. yeah, health yeah. is very important. Yeah, for and sure. we want to take care of these. What the Bible calls the temple of the Holy Spirit. These, mm -hmm. these bodies He's given us, yeah. and be good stewards of that. So, uh, right. good discussion, guys. Yeah, thanks, All you right. guys. Stay with us. There's more to come. Today's show covered a lot of ground, from caring for our outward physical health to adjusting our inward spiritual focus, mm. and how all of that impacts our marriage relationship. That's right. I think you yeah. nailed it when you said focus. Mm. What's most important to us? Our relationship with God first, mm -hmm. and then our relationship with each other. And nothing, not even a number on a scale, mm -hmm. can affect your love and commitment to each other. Absolutely. Yeah. And this kind of unconditional, forever commitment, it flows out of a relationship with the author of that kind mm -hmm. of love, Jesus. Having His love as your foundation and source changes everything in your life. Mm -hmm. And your marriage especially will be so much better for it. If you'd like to talk with someone about what it means to walk in God's love, mm -hmm. or maybe pray about something that's going on in your life, mm -hmm. our prayer line is on the screen. Mm -hmm. Someone from our team would love to pray with you. Or you can visit our website at abetterus.tv for lots of marriage resources that will serve to strengthen your relationship with God and with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, with God, there is always hope to become a better us. Mm -hmm.